Hi everybody, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessLecture.com and today I want to share with you one of my favorite games by Bobby Fischer. Of course everybody probably has a favorite game of Fischer. He is truly one of the greatest world champions. But I feel like the game I'm about to show you now is a little bit less popular or a little bit less known, but nevertheless it's very effective for everybody who plays the Sicilian defense. So let's start by going over the game and I'm going to highlight why this game is extremely important and why everybody should learn from it. So Fischer is played against Rubinetti. I believe he may be either from Italy or Argentina. Uh, and after e4, c5, knight of 3, d6. d4 takes, takes. Knight of 6, knight c3. Of course, we're going to see some kind of Sicilian. But this time, it's not quite the knight dwarf. It's the Schwieringen Sicilian. This move e6, you probably don't see as much these days. And the reason is because of the Karis attack. This move g4 became really popular, was used by a lot of strong GMs in the 80s and later in the 90s and eventually little by little put this move e6 out of business so to say. But I would say that nowadays the Karis attack is still playable for white and black has found new ways and new antidotes against it. So. I would not be surprised if this move e6 sort of comes back in popularity. And Bobby plays his favorite move, the Sozin, bishop c4. Now the move bishop c4 is extremely rare these days. As a matter of fact, if you face the Nidorf, this is the most popular opening, and you want to play like Bobby Fischer, this game will really be important to you. Why? Well, the reason is here you can still play the move bishop c4 and after e6 you simply transpose to the game. That's why I want to share it with you. It's actually quite important idea for white and most players are not ready for the Sozin these days. So let's get back to the game move order. e6, bishop c4, a6. Bobby simply plays bishop b3. This is a typical idea, prophylactic against the b5 pawn push and black plays b5, the most aggressive way and the most popular way. At the right moment, he's going to try to put pressure on the knight and directly put in pressure on the e4 pawn. So, of course, white needs to be aggressive. Moves such as a3 are way too slow and Bobby simply castles. It's actually well known that the b4 pawn push is not recommended here because after knight a4, taking the e pawn is way too dangerous you're just going to get attacked directly and at some moment you're probably going to get checkmated. So this has been all analyzed. I mean, there's no need for me to spend too much time on it. You guys can do quick research on your own. Bishop b7 is what black plays. And I would say besides bishop b7 and bishop e7, these are the two most popular moves. And Fischer plays rook e1. And he's getting ready for the classic Sicilian peace sacrifice. And I feel like a lot of you have to know the sacrifice if you're white. If you're black, you actually have to be ready for a just-in-case as well. But I highly recommend that you study the sacrifice because you can use it, I would say, in 80% of all the Sicilians, if not even 90% of all the Sicilians. It doesn't have to be the Sozin. It could be a totally different Sicilian. So knight b7, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and here, knight c5, it looks as though everything is going really well for black. And here comes Fischer's sacrifice. Bishop d5. Typical sacrifice actually is knight d5, but you can see that he wanted to trade the bishop first. And after pawn takes d5, black accepts the sacrifice. I should mention that if bishop takes d5, e takes d, this pawn is about to fall and we get the very beautiful outpost on c6. So again, bishop d5 is not as popular as knight d5, but I feel like here it's very strong. Pawn takes, 
pawn takes. Now, obviously, bishop e7 simply loses on the spot. Knight f5, and the bishop is trapped. And the game is more or less over right away. So, Rubinetti plays this move, king d7. And at first sight, it looks as though black is all right. The king is more or less safe. Potentially, the king's gonna hide on the queen side, maybe here, here, and here. And after all, black gets a full piece for the pawn. Where is white's compensation? You may wonder. And this is why this game is very important. Like all Sicilian positions, white doesn't win the game right away. It's called long-term compensation, long-term game. You sacrifice a piece and you basically keep attacking the king who is running like the chicken with his head cut off. There's really no safe haven for the king anywhere on the board because these pawns are going to help us to mount the attack. And Fisher immediately spots how to get more out of the attack. B4, x -clam. The whole point of the sacrifice is based on the fact that this knight has no good squares. So knight a4 is really the only good square. Now we take, take, and very strong move c4. Notice how with this beautiful c4 d5 pawns, we basically eliminate the bishop from the game. Furthermore, we open up the queen. The a4 pawn cannot be protected. And the attack is going to go even stronger with already two pawns for the piece. I should mention that both rooks and the bishop on a fade are merely spectators in this game. They're not even participating. Whereas all of white's army is perfectly placed. And I would argue that it's white who looks to have extra material rather than black. Because both of white's rooks are ready to jump at any moment. So let's see what happened next. So black's trying to defend. He's making a run for it. King c8. Queen takes a4. So far so good. And queen d7. Well, black is following sort of the old uh, advice. When you're down, exchange. When you're down, trade. Obviously, white is not in the trading business here. Queen b3. Simple, quiet move. And says, here, I give you free tempo. Can you come up with a good move? And honestly, with all of these guys on the back rank, I don't see how Black's going to get out of this in a very short term. Black really needs a lot of moves to get his pieces organized, whereas White is getting ready to break through. What are the typical breakthrough ideas here for White? Well, c5 is sort of the most common, especially if you place the rook on c1. Of course, this bishop could play a key role, putting pressure on the knight or getting regroup. And of course, c6 outpost, and this massive knight on d4 all have a key role in the attack. Fundamentally, we need to get the last piece into the game, the a1 rook. So g5, drastic measures. Black has to do something, but simply bishop g3, knight h5. Again, black is really going after the bishop, but at this point, we may not even need that bishop. We have two rooks, the knight and the queen, and the massive pawns on the queen side. That's where the attack is coming from. And c5, x -clam. Perfect timing and excellent execution. Of course, there's nothing wrong with the move rook a c1, but notice that you're kind of losing a little bit of a tempo, and here he can take, followed by bishop g7, start harassing the knight, and there's no need to give black any, any, any kind of hope. So I kind of like what Bobby does. c5 immediately. Who cares about pawns at this moment when both of the opponent's rooks and the bishop are totally out of the game. Pawn takes, pawn takes. Now, if bishop takes e5, then rook c1 is a very nasty pin. So, that's why black plays queen takes d5. Again, this looks like a great move, right? It looks like black is even winning. You're threatening checkmate and the queen trade. What could be better? And you just want a central pawn. So, what did Bobby have in mind here, guys? This is a good time to try to pause the video and figure out White's next move. And here White plays very simple chess and I'm sure Fisher has calculated this to then. Rook e8, check. And now it's all forced. King d7 only move. Queen a4, check. Again, only one move for Black. Bishop c6. And if you saw this far, good job. But there is one more move. If you don't see the next move, 
this whole line doesn't work. Let me give you a little bit more time, see if you can find it. It's a little bit difficult move, but it's really the only move for white to keep the initiative going. You have the queen under attack, you have mate, and your rook's under attack. Yet, with one simple move, all of these threats are stopped. Simple chess, knight takes c6, leaving the rook on pre, but you're also setting up a very nasty discovered attack using the knight. So black takes, well, black actually resigned here to tell you the truth, but I thought that black in the game would have to take the rook with the king. Why the king? Well, if you take with the rook, then after knight b4, we win the queen and its curtains. So I thought this was the only move. And here you have probably more than one way to win. So what are the different ideas here for white? Well, the first idea that comes to my mind is why don't you get the rook involved? Although you can start with this move knight before check first. Notice the queen's under attack, the king's in check only moves queen d7. And now another tempo move c6. Things are looking pretty sour for black. If queen e7, check, here, check. You see how the attack is simply very powerful. Bishop e7 I think is the only move. And now again white has a lot of different ideas to his disposal. Um, maybe even activating the knight such as knight c6 going after the bishop. So there are many different ideas. What I also like is inserting the check first. So if you don't want to play c6 yet, I kind of like activating the rook, taking away the square from the queen. And now c6, and again, things are looking pretty bad. If queen d8, we, here we can even play c7 check. So the attack plays itself. Honestly, black should have played on probably for a little bit longer, but Bobby Fischer definitely should win this with these guys out of the game. So let me make some highlights for you why this is an important game to know. Let's back up a little bit. Why all of this happened? Fundamental idea in the Sicilian is your opponent's king is stuck in the center. This is the key position. The king is stuck in the center. Black never had a chance to develop, to finish development. This is why moves such as knight d5, or in this case bishop d5, are really, really important. All you want to do is simply draw the king out, stop him from castling. If you can do that, you have what is called long-term compensation. Don't be afraid that you don't have immediate way to give checkmate or immediate way to win material, because as Fisher shows that even just one piece for the pawn, the attack is devastating. And after b4, what I really like is this move c4, connecting the two pawns, cutting the bishop out, this, using this pin, and the fact that all of these guys are utterly paralyzed and the a4 is about to fall, we're gonna get the second pawn. And you know what? Even if you don't see the win from here, it's okay. You have to trust yourself. Trust into the power of the attack. People like Tal and Fisher are really good at it. Kaspar was really good at it. Judith Polgar, I can keep going. Shirov, Topalov, all of these guys have a really excellent feel for the initiative. And as long as you're attacking and your opponent's defending, you are uh, putting pressure and it's always more difficult to defend in chess. So I hope you learned your lesson here. And in the future, look for these sacrifices, thematic knight d5 or bishop d5 ideas in the Sicilian. And you will probably win a couple games if you remember the ideas. Thank you very much. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for ChessLecture.com. Goodbye.